Hey everybody, welcome to my home. My name is Becky and I'm so excited that you're here today. Well, we're not gonna be decorating today. We have done quite a bit of decorating over the last couple of weeks. If you have not seen my fall decorating series, make sure you go back and watch it. It was a lot of fun and I had the best time doing it, but now it's time for me to start thinking about Halloween, my favorite holiday. I love it and I'm looking so forward to it. I'm not quite ready to start decorating yet, but it's gearing up. So to kick off the Halloween season, we're going to do a craft today. And what we're going to do is going to be a piece of clothing. We're going to doctor it up a little bit. So a couple weeks ago, David and I, we went antiquing in Johnson City, Tennessee, and we purchased this shirt. And I'm glad I purchased it because I actually forgot my coat while I was there, so it really came in handy. But I really genuinely love this shirt. I just like the handmade boutiqueness of it. But I've been noticing them a lot when I go to the antique stores because even though it's not antique, a lot of the antique stores, they allow vendors in that will have like um, maybe matchbox cars or NASCAR collectibles. Um, some of them are boutique type of items that they were handmade or repurposed or recycled. So that's kind of the, the booth that I went into. They had made leather bracelets and earrings and these shirts. Now these shirts, what they are, are thrifted flannel shirts that have been doctored up and i'm going to show you what mine looks like in just a second but they're really popular right now and it's not just the flannel it's also t-shirts they take the shirts and they spray a bunch of bleach around there and then they put a decal on it and i'm going to show you mine i'm going to back it up just a little bit but you can see that they go really heavy around the bottoms and also around the elbows and I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to show you the back and it's just a decal of sorts on a piece of thin white fabric. Now it was sewn in and I believe I can sew that much in. <laughs> I'm going to try. Um, we're going to try this. We're going to do it together. But in October, I am going on a trip a trip of a lifetime, a trip of my, off of my bucket list. Um, for Christmas last year, my gift from my family was a trip to Salem, Massachusetts. And I am over the moon. It's like I said, it's, it's on my bucket list of places to visit and we're going during Halloween. So yes, I know it's going to be extremely busy and extremely crazy, but I don't own any warm Halloween clothes. It does not get warm enough here during Halloween for me to own any. So I was trying to decide what I was gonna wear and I thought, you know what? That shirt that I got in the mountains would be really cute to wear, but what if it was more Halloween-y? Um, I would rather it be more color specific to Halloween. So I thought, well, I bet I could replicate that. Now, let me just say real quick disclaimer. If you see these items from a small business purchase them from them. I absolutely support small businesses. And you know, when you buy something from, from these people, you're putting food in their children's mouths and shoes on their feet. And I absolutely don't want to discourage you from buying from the vendors, but I couldn't find the color that I wanted for the trip that I'm taking. So I am going to try to replicate this myself, but I know it will not be as nice as this one that I bought. Um, by the way, that shirt, cost $25 from the antique store. Now I found this shirt from Burlington for $11.99 and it is the colors that I want. It is the Halloween vibe that I'm going for and we're going to try to doctor it up like this other shirt is. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out. We're going to be doing this together. I've never done this before. This is what I have. This is what I have learned. Um, we need bleach and a spray bottle and then we need, well, that little piece of fabric on the back, the best I can tell, it's just a thin piece of white fabric. So I got a half a yard at the Hobby Lobby and I purchased the thinnest print and press paper that I could find. Um, I do have an inkjet printer. It is specific for inkjet printers. Um, it was $5.99, so we're going to print a picture on here, 
put it on this fabric and sew it on the back of there. But the first thing we've got to do is bleach the shirt. The other very important thing that you must know if you're gonna try this is that you need peroxide to neutralize the bleach once you get the whiteness that you need because if you let it sit on there too long, it's gonna eat a hole through the shirt. Now I went to, Wal this is so funny because I went to Walmart to get a bottle of peroxide and a spray bottle. And what do I find? I find peroxide and a spray bottle. I mean, this is genius. Welcome to 2022. I mean, how many times have you cut your elbow and you're like pouring that bottle, <laughs> bottle of peroxide and it's dripping down your arm? This is genius. I love this. So you need peroxide to neutralize <laughs> the bleach. So let's, get, I'm gonna get everything together. I'm gonna meet you outside and we're gonna try this project. All right, so I was trying to do a time lapse of the bleaching process, but it's taking a really long time, and I even had to go back and add more bleach. Um, the thing I will tell you is it works better with drips. So, like, if you kind of squeeze the bottle and then just let it drip everywhere, it's going to be better than just spraying it. I did learn that. But while we're waiting outside for the bleach to work, I want to show you... Um, what our next step is gonna be. Now, I'm gonna fix the camera so you can see a little closer. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on Google and we're gonna punch in free vintage Halloween images, okay? We wanna make sure we put free in there because we're not trying to steal anything from anybody, okay? So then I'm gonna click images and that's gonna give me a closer uh, view of what I'm looking for. Now, here is all kinds of fun Halloween images that we can pick from. Now, I do want a portrait. I don't want it to be landscape. I would like for it to be portrait, uh, just so it would fit the shape of the shirt a little better. So I look through all of these, and there are some absolutely beautiful images in here. I mean, I mean, I, it's just beautiful. I wish I could print all of them and just stick them all in frames all over my wall, but I can't. <laughs> I mean, I could, I, I absolutely could, but it's just, you're limited to what you can take the time, the time you have to look on here and just find the most beautiful images. But I did find one that I really liked and it's just up here, let me find it. I like this little girl here sitting on the pumpkin. Now, I went, or it says visit, because here's a website here, and it does say free vintage Halloween um, images on here. So, we're going to visit their site. Now, the first thing that I noticed is that they do have terms of use. Um, I, I clicked on the terms of use, and I agree with everything that they're saying. It's basically that you're not going to steal their images and sell a bunch of products using their images. We are only making one shirt. Um, they allow you up to five. I, I mean, we're all, we're within the, what they allowed us to do here. So we're fine. I'm also going to put their website, um, down in the description box in case you'd like to use them and use this image. I will include that. But what we're going to do now, there's more than just that little girl here to pick from. There's lots here to pick from. Um, I looked at all of them, but I still like her. So I clicked on her. Now, the thing about these, let me go back for a second. The thing about these websites is 
you're going to click if you click the wrong thing like if you click download for, you're going to put something on your computer that you don't want we don't want um we don't want this what we want is this one particular picture hold on one second so what i'm trying to say is i don't want to potentially download the wrong thing so for me personally, I'm sure if someone was smarter with a computer than I am, that there is a, a way to download the PDF and do all that. I just, I don't feel comfortable doing that. But what I do feel comfortable doing is clicking on the image. Here's the image. I'm going to right click and I'm going to save the image on my computer. Okay. That's what I'm comfortable doing. Then after it's saved on the computer, I'm going to go pull up that picture and I'm going to print it. Now, it doesn't have a type of paper that I have that option, but I'm just going to use heavyweight. That's going to be close enough. I'm going to use high quality. The size of the paper is letter, and then we're going to do it in a 8 by 10 size um, and then just make sure that it, it fits. See, if I don't click that square there, it's going to cut the top of her hat off. So we're going to uh, click that button that says fit picture to frame and we've got everything right so all I have to do now is hit print and we're going to see what she looks like. Here's the process of the shirt. It's not working. It's not doing anything that I wanted it to. I don't know. This may be a Pinterest fail for us today. You can see the end is lighter, but it's not white like the other one. Huh. I may not need that peroxide after all because it's not neutralizing. <laughs> it is definitely not, it's not even seeping through to the back. It's just kind of soaking it in. I don't know you guys this may not work out for us well we may have a disaster out there and a, a big fat fail I, I don't know you know I can go clean the bathtub and get one ounce of bleach within 12 feet of me and it's gonna get on my clothes and it's gonna ruin it but I take a whole spray bottle full of bleach and spray it directly on the clothing item and it doesn't work what do you think about that well, we're going to continue on with our project. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out an eight and a half by 11 piece of this fabric. And then we're going to iron on our little image here. And I hope that should, let's see, make sure that that size is up just right here. Cause I did do an eight by 10. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. We can cut down the fabric if we have to. So I'm going to make you look, uh, come a little bit closer so you can see and we're gonna cut the fabric. Okay, so the instructions say to preheat the iron, do not use steam, press transfer to project, image side down. Okay, and then remove the transfer backing sheet. So I'm going to, I've got my iron going, I'm going to lay that there. 
and then we're going to see how it works out. Let's see. We're going to cut the steam off, and I'm going to cut this to maybe, I'm going to go a little lower. I don't know. It doesn't say what setting to use, but we're going to use wool, and that way it's, um, it's not real, real hot, but it's hot enough. Okay, let's try it. All right, that was a little resistant. Maybe we need to go a little cooler. Kind of felt like it was a little too hot, but it stuck quickly. But I do think that that wool was a little hot, so I cut it down to silk. Silk might be not enough. I'm sticking. Okay. Let's see. It's on there. Ouch, it's hot, it's hot. Okay, it's coming off. Let's, let's iron it just a little bit more and then we'll pull it off. Just to make sure it's on there good and I don't get halfway through pulling the backing off and have to go back. Okay. That might be enough. Let me, I'm just gonna cool it down just a little bit just because it's hot. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we got. Oh, we need to we need to iron a little bit more. Okay. I've ironed it a little bit more. We're gonna start pulling it off here. Let's see. I got that a little too hot. Okay, let me get this side piece here. And that's it. There's our image. And it's pretty thin. Um, you know, it doesn't seem like it would be too thick to put on the shirt. And I just realized what I did wrong. I made a mistake, you guys. We got to do this again. <laughs> I did not reverse my image. Look, it's backwards. The words are backwards. So we've got to go back to the drawing board and print out another image. Um, I, I'm sorry this happened, but I'm glad this happened because if you guys do this, I want you to be able to know that you have to reverse that image. So I'll be right back. Okay, this is the correct way that it should be. <laughs> and there you go. And I did mess up right there, but I think it it just adds to the vintage quality. I'm not really concerned about that. So the next thing I need to do is go get that hot mess of a shirt and see what, what we can make out of it. Um, honestly, okay, so this... This paper is a different type of paper. Let me show you the difference. This one I got from Hobby Lobby. And if you can see the difference, it's a lot more yellow and it's kind of shiny and thick. This was some that I had already. I didn't realize that it was, you know, down there. It's Avery and it's a much better quality um, type of end result. But I will tell you, it took a lot longer to peel it off than, than the one from Hobby Lobby did. Um, I, I like this one better. It looks more natural, but it costs a little more, I think. I, I didn't even realize I had it or I wouldn't have gone and bought the one from Hobby Lobby, but uh, I like that better. If you like, if you want it more um, cloth-like, I guess you could say, get the Avery because it turned out better and the color was better too. I don't know if you can kind of see the difference in the coloring. And this is kind of a uh, slick feeling as well. This is more matte. So anyway, I'm gonna go check on the progress of my uh, flannel shirt. All right, it's it's not working. It's, I mean, it's obviously light. I know it's hard to see, I'm really sorry. I mean, it's obviously lightening it up but it's not bleaching it to the point of what I saw in my inspiration shirt. 
So I'm not quite ready to give up on my project just yet. I'm going to go to the store and get another bottle of bleach because what I had was just what I had. You know, it was just in the laundry room. Um, but I'm gonna try something different. I, I looked online and read another tutorial specifically for flannel. So she did say that depending on the type of flannel it was, it could take longer, but um, I'm gonna try something different. I'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, here's what it looks like right now. Um, it is it is lighter, of course, but the other shirt was white down here, so I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But anyway, I looked up online specifically for flannel, and this lady, she said this is how she does hers. She gets a 50-50 solution in her sink, and I don't want to fill this whole sink up, but I'm going to do a 50-50 solution in here. And maybe a little more, I don't know. But we're just gonna pour this in here and watch. That splat that'll splash up on me and ruin what I'm wearing. But I did put on a white shirt um, just in case. But okay. We're gonna do that. And then I'm gonna take the part that I want to dye or not bleach. And she said put a rubber band on it. And that way, I think the rubber band might be like a just a stopping point for your bleach so it doesn't go up any further. I don't have any rubber bands, so I'm putting hair ties because that's all I have. And she said, just let it lay in there for a little while. She said, sometimes it might take longer. Sometimes it might be fast. Just watch it. That's what we're going to do. Um... Because at this point, what I'm trying, what I'm doing is not working. I mean, this shirt is dry from bleach. It's, it's dry. It's not even wet anymore and it's not completely done. So I'm going to tie this bottom part up here real quick. And then I'm going to stick it in the bleach and see what happens. And hopefully magic will happen and we can finish this project <laughs> That has been a disaster since we started. It's been one thing after another, hasn't it? All right, I'll be back. video up it's been one disaster after another but I really do like the shirt and I like how it turned out I'm gonna put it on for you and let you see it even though it didn't turn out the way that I had thought I still think it's beautiful and I still love it again this was the original shirt this was what it was supposed to look like and this is 
all I got. So I think the difference is that I looked um, at the fabric and this is 100% cotton and this is cotton, I think it's 50%, let's see. This is 50%, 52% cotton and 48% polyester. So I think that's the difference. So if you like this project, don't let this stop you from doing it. Just make sure you've got 100% cotton um, and, and you should be fine. I think the, the polyester is what stopped mine from being successful. Still love the shirt. I'm still gonna wear it. Um, I'm gonna try it on and let you see it. I made the back part low enough to where my hair wouldn't hide the, the design. Too bad anyway. Can you see? I don't know if you can see or not, but that's it. I really like it. I think it's gonna do the job um, that I need it to do in, in Massachusetts when it's chilly out and I can layer and then that way um, if it isn't quite as cold as I feel like it's going to be I can take it off and put it back on and just real quick just in case you're interested I want to show you my other uh, shirt that I'm going to wear while I'm there I'm absolutely in love with it I ordered it from Amazon it fits perfect it does come one size fits all so there's no way to really size it but isn't that amazing. This is going to be my second shirt that I'm going to wear um, while I'm there. And I only, I'm only there for the weekend, so I don't need a whole lot of clothes, but these two are going to be my staple pieces. My beautiful little witch back there. So even though it wasn't successful, I feel like I, I need to upload the video and let you see my failure as well, because if you want to do this, at least you learn from my mistakes and you can, and you can know not to get a polyester <laughs> blend uh, flannel shirt. So try the project. If you do try it, let me know. Let me know how you like it, how it turned out. And if you're on Instagram, post a picture on Instagram and tag me there, okay? Um, until next time, I love you all and I'll see you later. Bye.